I'm Paul Daddy from Paul Daddy's Blind Hole Barbecue, and I love it when a plan comes together. So what's the plan? To make the best pork loin possible on my Yoder YS1500 pellet smoker. Pork loins are generally very reasonable in price. Now this one came in at just under $2 a pound, and they usually have a nice fat cap on top. Truth is, the meat is very lean, and that's where the challenge lies. Sometimes it winds up lacking that flavor punch, but this one will punch you right in the mouth with flavor. What I'm doing today is drying the loin off with paper towels and then cutting it in half. It'll be more manageable, it'll cook more evenly, and one of them will be finished with a barbecue glaze. They're gonna be smoked at 150 degrees Fahrenheit until they reach 116 degrees Fahrenheit internal, and then given the trig treatment. They're gonna be foil wrapped and finished at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you're a student of barbecue, then you probably know about the trig shig. If you're just a connoisseur of barbecue and maybe not a disciple, then maybe you're not sure what that is, but we're gonna get those details in a bit. Now, I just can't tell you enough how good these both turned out. Now, let's get to the details. Dry the loin off with paper towels. Basically, remove any piece of meat that sticks out that makes the shape irregular. And yes, you'll trim the fat and maybe some of the meat if needed. Parts that protrude may burn, they may dry out. So we're gonna shape it up a bit with the finished presentation in mind. Pieces that I trim off, I bag up, I label it, and it'll go in my next batch of sausage that I make. Now with the fat cap facing up, cut a cross hatch pattern on top, maybe a quarter to a half inch deep. Now I found that this pattern actually enhances the flavor of the cook. It allows more seasoning penetration and it also cooks a little bit more on top to make the remaining fat quite delicious. Okay, for this cook, I chose to use a binder, and in this case, it's a slather of yellow mustard and pickle juice. I mix this up at 50-50, and I put it in a squirt bottle. And the thought of using a binder, and especially yellow mustard as a binder, sometimes gets a lot of opinions in the comment section. While almost all comments are generally appreciated, I'll tell you up front that on this particular cook, it turned out so good, I'm not gonna change a thing. You wanna take that slather and spread a light, even coating on the meat side and on the sides of the loin. Try to make it look the same consistency all over. Now we're gonna season up the parts that got the binder, starting with number 16 black pepper, and that can be purchased at Walmart online if you have a hard time finding number 16. So you wanna hold that bottle up real high, that helps to get you more even coverage. Now next I'm using kosher salt, but you only want to use half as much as you did the black pepper, maybe a little bit less. Now follow that up with the Lowry seasoned salt. And again, only half as much as you did the black pepper. And you want to be extra careful with the Lowry's because they can come out really fast. And as you're seasoning, pat each layer down as you finish that layer. This approach to seasoning has been used by Goldie's Barbecue. Maybe not on pork loins, but on a lot of their delicious barbecue, it gets this treatment. And one thing of note, you need to do the seasoning in order. Black pepper's always first, followed by the salt, and then the Lowry's. Turn that loin over to the presentation side, that's the scored side. Add the slather and then try to get some of the seasoning down between the scored areas as you're seasoning it up like we did on the other side. Okay, and in the meantime, I have fired up my Yoder YS1500 pellet smoker. Get it warmed up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the minimum low temp setting from the factory is 175 degrees, but there's a hack that can get you to cook at a lower temperature. Now on the smoker, you need to go into the menu, go to settings, go to advance, calibrate, and then just adjust the calibration to a plus 25. Okay, that plus 25 makes the smoker believe that it's actually 25 degrees hotter than it is. So this can be verified by the dual tell truth thermometers that the smoker has. Why do we want to smoke that low? Because generally speaking, pellet smokers can struggle to produce the smoky flavor that we all desire. So pellet smokers are very, very efficient. They burn too clean much of the time. So a lower temperature, got a greater chance to produce more smoke. Now, if you do happen to go to a lower temperature, so be sure to start with a clean fire pot so your smoker won't have a chance to flame out. Today I'm using B&B Championship blend pellets and I'm using a smoke tube that's got B&B applewood pellets in it for a little additional smoke. Now when that smoker climbs up to temp, put the loins on the top shelf about in the middle and I've got drip pans underneath. That's for easy cleanup. I'm probing one of the loins with my Thermalworks Blue Dot, and the other one I'm using the Meat Stick 4X that I was sent out for review. Now this Meat Stick probe is wireless. It has a 650 foot range, so let's give this a try. 
And I'll mm -hmm. tell you right quick, the uh, meat stick does come with a great app. It's very easy to use. And most importantly, it is performed flawlessly, getting that signal into every room inside my two-story house. Now, my outdoor kitchen is not on the patio. It's not attached to my house in any way. Now, I've tried several other brands of wireless thermometers, and they've either struggled or just flat out failed to get the Bluetooth signal out of this 10-gauge steel on my Yoder and into my house. Now the most important feature on the Bluetooth probe is the range and the meat stick is definitely at the top of the class. Close up that pit and we're going to smoke until we see 116 degrees Fahrenheit internal. I've got the early warning alarm on the meat stick 4X set for 111 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, it took in the neighborhood of three hours to hit that 116 degree mark. Now you can always raise the temperature to get through faster if you're in a hurry. As the Lloyds reach that 116 degrees, you want to take them off and then that's when we're going to wrap them. We're going to use the Johnny Trig magic here. So as you remove the Lloyds for wrapping, you want to increase the smoker temp on up to 275 so it'll be climbing while we're doing the wrap. I've got my controller set to 300 because of that recalibration we did. So it'll actually be trying to cook at 275. Now what I'm giving you here today is my version of the trig sheet. We're going to start with two sheets of foil. Now one would do, but I prefer to go with two sheets of heavy duty foil, 18 inches wide. First thing I'm going to put on there is about three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Now you can just pinch some off or you can cut it or measure it, but you don't have to be exact at all. Johnny Trig is known to use parquet instead of butter. I don't have enough parquet on hand for this cook, so butter it is. But parquet will definitely work for you. You can smash that butter down on your foil a bit. Now next comes the sugar. I'm using turbinado sugar. Johnny Trigg would probably be using brown sugar. Brown sugar has a higher molasses content, but turbinado sugar is so much easier to use. So sprinkle on a generous amount. I'm gonna throw on a blob of lard, but we don't wanna use too much cause that might mute down your seasoning a bit. Now this part's definitely important. You wanna drizzle on some honey. Be generous here. Now this part adds a little kick. We're going to give it a little tiger sauce, or you could use Thai sweet red chili sauce, but don't get too carried away with the sauce because it definitely going to fire it up a little bit. Now place the loin meat side down in the middle of all that goodness and then repeat the process. We're going to give it the exact same treatment right there on top. Okay, double wrap that loin. I orient my foil sheets the same direction because it makes it easier to collect that liquid when we finish up. Now they go back in your 275 degree smoker. Reinstall the probes and reset your alarms to 140 and 145 degrees Fahrenheit. These are our target temperatures. Now keep in mind that pork loin's not totally uniform in shape and the temps from the front end to the back end, they can vary. So it doesn't hurt to double check the temperatures in various places before you see that target temperature. A good thermopin or instant read thermometer works quite well here. When one of them gets 140 degrees, you want to remove that loin and we're going to glaze it with your favorite barbecue sauce. And I'm using a great blend. It's one bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's, one bottle of Stubbs barbecue sauce, two squirts of lemon juice, and one and a half tablespoons of minced garlic. I love this stuff. We just want to blob that sauce on and be sure to get it on the sides of the loin. You want to be careful. You don't want to brush it too much because you don't want to brush off the seasoning. Now, back on the smoker, unwrap for 15 minutes. And then we're gonna pull it after 15 minutes and rewrap it for the resting process. Now, 145 degrees Fahrenheit, that's the minimum safe temperature for pork, but that doesn't include ground pork. So remove the loins from the smoker and you let them rest at least 15 minutes if you can't wait. But I go longer, more like 30 minutes to an hour. Now after that rest period, you want to take the loin out and I find that the best thing to do here is just to pour up the liquid from the foil into another container so you can reclaim that and any undissolved sugar. This will all go on the loin once it's been sliced up. Now the liquid from the first loin, I'm going to stick that back in the smoker while I'm doing the second loin and then we'll finish up. Now this is the unglazed loin. Now just look at that. It's almost a work of art. Now, how does it taste? Well, let's slice it up and find out. Beautiful, simply beautiful. That is absolutely a flavor explosion. This thing is moist, it's tender, it's cooked to perfection. Now we're gonna put the sliced loin in a foil pan and all that sweet liquid goes right there on top. 
Guys, this is absolutely the best pork loin that I've ever tasted. Okay, let's cut up the glazed loin. Now, is this thing beautiful or what? You want to slice it as thick or thin as you want, and now we're going to taste it. It, too, has got a wonderful flavor. It's cooked to perfection. Which one do I like best? I'm a spice guy, and that flavor profile on the unglazed loin is much more intense, and it is my favorite. My sweet little wife, on the other hand, she prefers a less intense flavor profile, so she loves that barbecue sauce glazed version of this. Now, both of these loins are definitely home runs. You'll never look at pork loin quite the same as you did before you tried this. Now, let me know what you think, because I always enjoy reading your comments, and you can even tell me how much you hate seeing that yellow mustard if you want to. Now, all you got to do is hit that like button on your way out, consider subscribing, and hope to see you next time at Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. <laughs>